All right, so let's test this invention out. It works, but of course, it's not a complete project until we get a subpoena from Apple. Hi there, Adam here. Recently, a lot of manufacturers like Samsung and Panasonic have been taking an interest in integrating Android with home devices, basically creating a home network of automation. So today we're going to take a look at the Arduino ADK, which enables you to break out the device into different areas of the home. So let's get started. So as you can see here, we have our Arduino Mega ADK for Android in its original packaging. And let's take a look at the features. First off, the reset button is located right here and that can be used to reset the device. We have a power connector, a debugging connector for hooking up to the computer, and a USB connector for hooking up to the device. On the board we have our power header, analog inputs, digital outputs, communications, and pulse width modulation outputs. Now most of these can actually be used as digital input outputs. That's just something to keep in mind. For the purposes of working with the ADK, I recommend using a battery. Now I'm going to hook this thing up really quick. So what you were seeing earlier was this device hooked up with a remote control. This remote control I've modified inside. I have three different relays, one for each of these buttons here. And they take a five volt input to each one of these pins here. And it turns it into a relay that presses these buttons for me basically. And the remote control is actually hooked up to one of these. It's a 110 volt outlet. Now for the purposes of this video, it's going to be a lot easier for me to demonstrate with some LEDs rather than trying to use full-blown 110 volt outlets. So, we're going to get started on the firmware. So if you haven't done so already, I recommend checking out the video How to Build an Android App Part 3 Arduino Development. Uh, this will walk you through setting up the Arduino IDE uh, and it will get you started to where we're at right now. Next, you're going to want to download the XDA ADK trunk and the instructions are right here. You can get a list of client programs and plugins here for your various operating systems. And finally, what you're going to want to do is to go into the trunk folder that you download from the source checkout. Navigate to Arduino and you'll find a libraries folder in there. So you go into this folder and you replace the libraries with the libraries from the XDA ADK project. And then you'll be ready to launch the Arduino application. So next you'll want to open up the sketch provided in the XDA ADK repository. And you can find that in the trunk slash Arduino slash XDA ADK. Open that up and here's what we're working with. So the very first thing that happens is the Android accessory is defined right here. And then it jumps over to setup. Setup then initiates the serial connection and does the init LEDs function, which then turns all of these pins here into outputs and turns them on and then off. Then the accessory, this right here, is then powered on. So this becomes a USB device at this point right here. Next up, the loop is executed. So what loop does is it defines a three-part array. And then if the accessory is connected, it reads the message from the accessory, be that zero, or if it actually is a message, it'll be longer than zero. And it puts that into the message variable. And if the length is greater than zero, it'll act upon it. Now, if the message, if the first position in the message is a three, um, a hexadecimal three, zero x three, then it will command an LED to the value specified. So basically what happens is, the first part says I'm going to turn on an LED, the second part then says which LED, and the third part says high or low. And you can see that all right here. Most of this, uh, the serial.print, that's just for debug. Let's take a look at the serial monitor. So now, because I've plugged in battery to this, you can see when the LED is initialized, it turns them all on. And now let's hook up the debugging cable. Alright, so we want to see what happens when this thing gets initialized. So we're going to start the serial monitor now. And as you can see, it says starting, and then it initializes each one of the pins as it goes on down. And these are all the pins that are located in the init LED. These messages here, initializing pin 
whatever is coming from these two lines right here. Now in order to continue on this we're going to have to load up a device that actually has some firmware for our Android accessory up here and this is actually specified in the program on the Android side what it's looking for and let's get that hooked up really quick. Alright so now notice what happens when I plug this in. It automatically launches an application that's designed for this accessory right here. So let's go back to our debugging connection and I'm going to turn on and off the various LEDs and watch what happens here inside of this debugging window. Notice LED 0, that's the first one, is commanded to a value of 1. What I'm going to do now is I'll turn all of these on and you'll notice that some of them don't actually turn on. These ones right here don't actually affect anything at all. And the reason for that is because some of these LEDs are actually reserved pins on the Arduino device uh, for communication with USB and other parts. And of course, when the device is disconnected, it realizes that and it'll tell you, hey, connect up an XDA developer's board. This uh, is all handled right here by the Android accessory. This little block right there must match what this program here is expecting. So now if you have an Arduino ADK or a Demo Kit ADK, I recommend going to the XDA-ADK website and grabbing the source code that I put up there. Uh, go ahead and play with it, modify it, make it into something new if you'd like. Uh, both the application and the board firmware are both up on that website. And you can go ahead and grab that. They've been modified from the original Google format, which was the demo kit, to be more of a simplified version that is good for explaining things. So that's all for this episode. Next time we're going to get into programming the Android side of things. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and add me to your circles on Google+. Go to plus.adamoutler.com. Until next time, hack on!